definitely ano? we start off with the first question so Stefan after the book you came over to California to tell us you um, lead up to the third initiation uh, what can I tell you uh, we've seen a lot, a lot of things on social media <laughs> <laughs> what can I tell you uh, as usual a few days off uh, enjoying California now I'm back I came here quite early earlier than most of the players to get a few more practice session, uh, practice sessions in and uh, been enjoying the stay so far in Indian Wells I'm looking forward to the tournament and uh, I'm looking forward on a much normal much more normal Indian Wells this year than um, the last two years so we open up the question please state your name and uh, media outlet Hi, Richard Osborne with uh, BNP Perry Open Up. Paribasopen.com. One of the beauties of tennis is that it's just such a global sport, and I just wondered, given all that's going on in the world right now, how you feel about how the sport has come together to react to some of the things that have happened. I think it's important that uh, all the governing bodies and the organizations come together to help and uh, do the best they can in order to um, help save lives and uh, stop things that uh, don't belong in 2022 and so far the ATP has been doing a great job uh, providing financial support and having all players come together to to be one in all of this do you feel that in the locker room the sense of, of people coming together I feel it yes and uh, it's wonderful to see Any more? Hey, Stefan, I'm Chris Otto BMP Parva your doubles title with Feli was amazing. Uh, I'm wondering, cur curious to know how you feel about it. Do you think it's something, obviously you enjoy it, but do you think it's something that also benefits you all around as a player and maybe will help your singles in some way? Yes, I don't really get to play doubles a lot and I think it's a very kind of a relaxing way of uh, getting something more fresh into the game, you know, not falling into that pattern of always playing singles which is my favorite thing to do, but it's quite refreshing sharing some moments with Feli on, on the doubles field and having a little bit of fun. I honestly, I wasn't aiming for any titles or anything that week. I, I entirely just enjoyed every single moment with him. And regardless of whether we lose or win, <laughs> it was all about having the, the best time I could out there. And we played some great rallies, some had some amazing points with him, and that was already great on its own. Greetings. Uh, if you could take a, a moment and just compare the games of Rafa, Roger, and Novak, and ultimately, who do you think is, is the finest player? I can't answer that. I'm sorry. Okay. Russell. Stefanos Russell Fuller from the BBC. How is the elbow now? Do you feel as if that injury is completely behind you and are you, you're playing pain-free without any problems at all? Yeah, no pain. I've, would, I've been all right. Right, and, and given that there was so much uncertainty about how well you'd be able to play in Australia, given the surgery was so late, when you look back at the first Grand Slam of the year, did, did that go almost better than you could possibly have imagined it did? That was not normal. Not normal at all. My doctor had planned for me to start playing first week of clay season, and I and I ended up playing not just the Australian Open but the ATP Cup as well, and it threw him off. He didn't expect it. It was kind of a miracle in a way, um, and the fact that I was able to go deep in Australian Open was the best thing that has happened in my career so far in regards of comeback after such a difficult injury, which uh, I suffered with for many years on the tour. Anyone else? Hey, Stefan, it's uh, Andrew John from the Desert Sun. Uh, just well, wanted to get your thoughts on uh, how Rafa's been playing early this season, especially after the injury last year. Oh, massive upgrade on his game for sure. He has been, he has had so far a great start of the season winning lots of matches and um, having great results on hard courts, you know, uh, week in, week out. 
I, uh, I don't know what his preparation was, but uh, uh, I read a little bit of some of the statements that uh, he made and the comments, and it's uh, quite inspiring in, in a way. Was that a bit of a dark period for you in your mind when you realized that you would have to do the surgery and then kind of came to the realization? Well, the risk was not extremely high, I would say, because I was dealing with a very professional, experienced doctor in that field. But uh, for sure, I went through a lot of stress, period of a lot of stress, a period where I didn't enjoy playing tennis anymore because the pain was uh, so big and so intense that I wasn't able to enjoy the game that I loved the most. And I remember being at the NITO finals uh, few weeks, no, actually a few days before the surgery, and I, uh, I was thinking of quitting. Um, I, don't, I didn't think back then that anyone could, would be able to, to help me uh, heal and get back to where I wanted. So it was a very difficult moment that I had to go through, and um, I was in a very bad place. The last three questions here. Yeah. Andrew at the ATP website. Uh, what do you enjoy about this tournament in particular? I, I know you enjoy the setting and all of that, but is there anything in particular that you like here at Indian Wells? I think, you know, the, the, the organization in terms of practice courts and having that massive field for the players is exceptional. And uh, I feel more tournaments should uh, apply that uh, to their venues. Richard, and then talk about what would it mean for you to make a run to the title here in the desert? I would call it the it can give me a massive amount of confidence to win Grand Slam titles if I pull that off. Last one. In terms of 2022 this year, what are your what are, what, what are your goals? What would be a su successful 2022 for you? To stay healthy and stay motivated, something that I struggled with last year because of my injury. I wasn't able to stay motivated because I didn't believe in myself because of my abilities. I wasn't able to be where I wanted to be. And my body was stopping me from going there. So it was very sad to feel helpless in a way. I felt, I felt weak and I felt unable to reach new heights. So I want to be consistent and, and feel good about myself this year. Thank you. Thank you.